Hello and welcome to the instructional video on the 2018 Ixio I 744. We'll, uh, we'll walk around the outside and then we'll move on to the inside. So uh, <clears throat> the habitation door uh, is on this side. Uh, and the blinds on this door are the same as on the other side. They just draw across with a concertina style, but we'll come to that when we uh, when we go inside. The uh, the bonnet catch, uh, being an A-class conversion, is just there. So you pull that lever down, like so, and that releases the bonnet. And then to pull the bonnet open, uh, just pull on the bottom, like so. Underneath here, the access isn't quite as good on a, as on a standard cab, um, but we have, um, we've got the washer fluid bottle there, uh, brake fluid here, and the oil fill is just here. Uh, there's a dipstick there with the red nozzle on it, that's just there. And then next to the brake fluid, we've got the, uh, the coolant bottle just here. To close the bonnet, the bonnet catches it in the centre just here, so uh, push the uh, bonnet to and then just give it a firm press and that closes the bonnet up. So working on around then, we have a diesel fuel fill here. Uh, you do need a key for that, so that's where your diesel fuel is filled. Working on along, we have uh, the water tank is here, so that's your fresh water tank. Um, to fill this, you can actually put a a hose pipe nozzle onto the end of this here uh, and simply f f uh, fill it up that way uh, on here we have like a nozzle that stops spillages as that's being filled if you were to just take this off and fill it if you unscrew this cap here uh, this fits just behind that cap so it stops any spillages uh, as you're filling it up this little key here is for the waste uh, water um, so that fits onto a nozzle which is just underneath here okay so it's a bit further along you can see the sticker there so if you're lining it up with a, a, a grid the wastewater comes out of this pipe here this little handle goes onto uh, that bar there and you turn that handle and that's what releases the wastewater uh, from this pipe here so just going back to the fresh water tank uh, to inspect it and clean it you can unscrew this here and then that gives you access into the tank uh, just when you f when you replace this just make sure it's it, it's on firmly and screwed up tight because uh, obviously if you're filling this uh, water could spill out of the seal there's a like a big uh, rubber o-ring that seals this tank so just make sure that's on uh, correctly to to drain the waste sorry to drain the fresh water from this tank and it's important that you do so uh, in freezing conditions because you don't want water to freeze inside the tank because it'll expand it can damage uh, the tank if frozen water uh, gathers in here <clears throat> so the drain for this tank is just on the top here and you can see that it holds 120 litres uh, and but you it's also possible to drain this down to 20 litres uh, so if you're traveling and you just want to carry the minimal amount of water it's possible to do so so you turn this lever anti-clockwise on the top here if you turn it fully anti-clockwise it will drain all the water out um, You've probably just heard it click there, uh, and then if you that, so that'll drain the 20 liters. If you if you uh, continue to uh, unscrew it, it'll drain the rest of the water. So that'll completely drain it. <laughs> Try not to unscrew it, you know, really far anti-clockwise because it, it can uh, it can come off the bottom. There's like a rod that goes through uh, and undoes the valve at the bottom. So to retain its water, you're screwing it fully clockwise and that will keep all the 120 litres of water in the tank. The mains uh, cable goes into this here, so that's your mains feed into the motorhome. And then the cable sits into this little notch here and then uh, you can close the door with the cable inside. <clears throat> These two things here, are uh, that's the drain for the fresh uh, for the for the boiler sorry so this is your drain to uh, drain down the boiler so it has a boiler which is 10 litres 
and that's the drain for that it's thermostatically controlled so if the temperature reaches six degrees uh, it will automatically drop all the water out of the boiler so that is now open to close it it needs to look like that so the the lever here the diamond shaped lever that needs to be perpendicular to the block also there's a little button on the side here so you press that in that blue button just on the side there that is the thermostatic valve so this is the manual valve there's a thermostatic valve there so the button has to be pressed in on the side and this has to look perpendicular this little valve here uh, drains the excess water out of the system so that is now open so to close all your water systems that must look like that so horizontal and vertical is open so moving on along then <clears throat> We've got a shower outlet here, so you've got access to the uh, water via a shower head. Uh, to put that in there, it's like a butterfly shaped valve. You push it, in, push that in, turn it around, and then there's a hose that comes off with a trigger on the end, and that allows you to uh, use a hose outside uh, to wash off dirty boots or do uh, dog odors tend to like this because you can shower the dog off. This is a, uh, an exhaust for the heater. Uh, so what happens is the if you're using the heater on gas then the exhaust from the gas system will be expelled from this So you'll see steam rising from that in cold weather you Just make sure that's kept clean and free of debris in this little vent here. So that's what that is uh, We've got the gas locker here um, So this was the shower head for the for the shower as you can see uh, It's got the little butterfly valve in that clicks into the uh, the socket into there so this has previously had a gas law refillable gas law system on it but it was taken out by the previous owner so this will take two 13 kilogram bottles uh, on on here and um, th there needs to be a, a flexible uh, hose that comes off this regulator so this is your inline regulator comes off here and then ends up into your bottle and then you switch your bottle on uh, by opening the tap there and these uh, secure your gas bottle in place so I'm working on around the motor home then I've got the garage area this is just for storage uh, as you can see it's quite a large storage area um, you can open these from inside by opening this pulling this little tab here so you can see that opens uh, from the inside the bike rack on this model and um, what happens is you pull this section down so it lies flat like that uh, the bikes sit on here and then that's like a ratchet strap you push that button in there and they secure the wheels in place and then these bars here go onto the crossbar of the bike and secure it in place uh, to get this back up it will lock into place like that there is a handle here I think you turn this here like that and that releases it so that you can push the bike rack back up again we've got the other side of the uh, rear garage storage area here there's a light in there uh, we've got the winder for the awning uh, just stowed away in there these are secure uh, fi fixings if you want to secure something into the uh, garage and tie it down so that little nub goes into there and then you turn those clockwise and it uh, secures them in place so they can they can slide up and down on that rail there's heating channeled into here through the blown air heating system which is just there so we have the toilet cassette next to this uh, I know the, the person buying this has got a motor home so they'll be used to this system but that's how the cassette comes out you just lift that little catch up there to empty it, put the nozzle like that, unscrew the cap, pour away the liquid from this tube here. As you're doing so, press this button in here and it lets air in as the liquid is shooting out. To fill it full of the chemical, you slide that back, open this lever up here, put the desired amount of chemical in with a little bit of water in the bottom, uh, and then it's ready to use again after you've 
rinsed it out and uh, and emptied it when you put this back in make sure when you put the cassette back in make sure that that looks like that and is facing that way slide this back in and then the cassettes ready to put back in uh, it's got wheels on the bottom and this handle extends for carrying it to the waste disposal point so this just slides back in like so we've got um, vents for the fridge so there's one at the top one at the bottom what it does is it draws cool air in at the bottom expels it at the top so again in hot weather like this the fridge does need to vent uh, it just needs to be kept free of debris and leaves uh, again so just need to uh, take care of these of these vents this here, um, I think it's actually a, a, an external gas. Um, yeah, I think it's an external gas barbecue point. So again, a bit like the shower point, you push that in, turn it around and that will give you a gas supply to uh, external gas appliances like a barbecue. So we'll move on into the motel now. So as we enter the motor, you've got the step switch. There is a, a warning light on the dash to tell you if the step is out uh, as you're setting off. Uh, it's worth just checking in your mirrors, obviously. You've got your light switches just here, and then there's individual zones on this four position switch here that'll uh, allow you to individualize the, the motor lighting system. You've got a chassis plate here showing all your uh, weights, your towing weights and your maximum chassis. This is the control panel, so to switch it on you press this button in here, keep it pressed in and then that illuminates the control panel. To toggle through the controls on this, it's this little wheel here, so you can see as I'm turning that it's going through the functions. So we'll start at the bottom, that's switching you pump on and off and to switch it on you just press on the wheel again we've got uh, 25 degrees today uh, so that's outside so it's nine o'clock and it's 25 degrees uh, it's 25 uh, 23 degrees inside that switches the control uh, panel on and off uh, that is your leisure battery that's your engine battery that's your fresh water, that's your wastewater capacity, and that'll allow you to change the clock. TV bracket underneath that. Um, so the main controls here at the front, uh, so the seats uh, are captain's chairs, they'll swivel around. To release the captain's chair, there is a little bar underneath. So if you slide that across like that, that allows you to swivel the seat around. To put the seat down or recline the seat, so you need to put these seats flat in order to get the A-class bed down, because that, that folds down from above. It's a quarter turn on these little handles here. So if you turn those quarter of a turn and then push the seat flat, then both seats will go flat so you can get the A-class bed down, which I'll show you now. So that's both seats flat like that. And then this little handle here, you push that, pull that towards you and then push down on the bed and that allows the bed to fold down. So it sort of cantilevers down like that and that's the A-class bed uh, in the sleeping position. So just on the cab controls to switch the radio and the sat nav on and off, there's a little switch there. So it means you can have it switched on while the uh, engine isn't running. Uh, the automatic gearbox on this, you've got neutral. Uh, if you bring it down and across like so, that basically puts it into automatic or manual mode. To select manual mode, you just go up and down through the gears. Uh, if you want to put it back into uh, automatic mode, then just put it across and you can see that you've got automatic manual, so that switches between the two. Reverse is across and down like so and then neutral is all the way back up to the top. That's the little light on the dash there next to the steering wheel that shows you that your step's out. You've got your uh, mirror controls just on that joystick control there. 
So moving on to the rest of the motorhome then. So we have underfloor storage on this model. To lift those up, you just press into that and then that reveals your underfloor storage and that's the same for those at the back as well. <clears throat> uh, so next appliance along then is the fridge. So we have the fridge here. You just press the on button on the side here. So that switches your fridge on. You can select um, whichever power source you want manually. So you've got mains electric, gas, 12 volt from the engine alternator. So that'll only work when the, when the engine's running. Or you can select automatic mode. So what that'll do is it'll automatically select the most relevant power source. Uh, so whether it be, if you're plugged into electric, it'll go for that first. And then it'll try and let ignite on gas. And then it'll try and find the power source from the engine running. So that's the most convenient setting, just leave it on auto. This is your um, temperature control. So on a hot day like this, you want the fridge to work harder. On a really cold day, uh, it will ice up if you put it on full. So just leave it on a lower setting in really cold conditions. To switch it off, it's again just a long press on there. The fridge uh, has a freezer section. Uh, on this one, I think you can actually take the freezer section out by pulling this section out here. If the fridge uh, is left, if you're leaving the motor on for any length of time, you want to leave the fridge slightly ajar. Uh, there's a little catch there that will allow you to uh, make it so that the fridge door doesn't close fully. And you can see that little peg there on the door handle sits into that uh, piece of plastic there. So that's everyday use. And then if you pull that back, you put the little peg into that plastic clip and that leaves the fridge slightly ajar so that you don't get stagnant air building up in the fridge. Not much I can say about the kitchen area really. It's uh, fairly straightforward. Obviously you need your pump switched on to get water out of your taps. When you first fill up with water, you need to um, f uh, switch your pump on. Wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out of the tap on both hot and cold. And then you know that you've filled up the pipes that come from the tank and lead into the tap. Uh, and then once you've got a pure flow of water, you can switch the tap off. And you know you then you've purged the system of air and you've just got water in the pipes. So this door draws across. Uh, it is important that you push that catch up when you're drawing that door across. Otherwise it will uh, damage that catch. Um, you've got more light switches here that you can adjust the, the lighting zones on so you see you've got four zones there and then your separate switches for the rear lighting to get the bed down on this rear uh, section there's a key that's required that goes into there press this button and then the bed will electrically lower from here you do need to remove these backing cushions so that it, what the bed won't go down with those fully with those on so you need to take those off Put them in the lounge area here, stole them away, and uh, then the bed will come down to its lowest position. Uh, on this model, there's a little table that comes out of here, a little coffee table. There's a little um, release mechanism on it there, so you just pull that down, uh, to just twist it uh, that way, and then it, it uh, allows a, a hydraulic leg to come up and the coffee table. Uh, sits a bit higher and then it stores away just by pushing it back in and pushing those in there's a little step here to gain access to the bed so if you draw that out uh, that's a step you step onto that to get into the bed again it's got a little catch on it just there so it is important that you press that in before you uh, put the step back in otherwise you'll damage that little clip Again, the shower, there's not much to say about that. It's just a, a, a mixer tap. Uh, the toilet, to use the toilet, this, this section here uh, blanks off from the front section, so you end up with the washroom. If you draw that door across, there's a completely separate area from all the rest of them. <clears throat> uh, to use the toilet then, uh, lift the lid. Make sure that the uh, valve is closed as it is now when you're driving, otherwise you'll get the toilet waste sloshing around. To open up the valve, slide that across, and you can see that opens and closes the valve there. Uh, so open up the valve, use the toilet, 
and then press the flush button here and then close the valve up uh, again. Uh, when the cassette is full, there's a little light that illuminates there to tell you that it's full, but you can actually see down into there. Um, so that's the toilet function. And then we've got another television bracket there. To release these, you just pull that arm down and then it'll allow you to swivel the, uh, the mechanism out for the television rack. There's a microwave in the cupboard above the fridge. Uh, straightforward, just a simple microwave. So that concludes the demonstrational video. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you've got on the day that you come and collect. Uh, and obviously ongoing if you discover anything you're not sure of. Uh, we're only a phone call away. So I look forward to seeing you on the happy day that you pick up this lovely new Burst of Motorhome.